let's do that again to the right. Let's go to the right, and then I'm going to tie this off at its shortest length. Okay, so this guy is stuck in 45 degrees of right rotation because he's got a knot in his right obliquus. And uh, if he wants to continue turning over and see what will his range of motion be? Let's talk about that. Um, can he rotate back to look forward? Well, he can because this one can move, this one, and if his big head rotators pull, they will pull the rest of these over. See, see two moves, three, four, five, six, and seven move. T1 does not move, it has these ribs coming out, so it's immobile. So he can, if we can get C2 over far enough with those big head rotators, then look, he's, he's looking straight ahead again. It is possible, he can look straight ahead no further. He will not be able to look to the left at all. His full range of motion will be from straight ahead, which will be difficult for him, and clunky, and then 45 degrees to the right will be his comfortable position. See, hands off, no stress, except for this stress, of course. Um, and that will be the position he probably sleeps in and the position he flops over into as soon as he gets on a massage table. And will he be able to move to the right more? Yes, because this can move to the right as well. C2 can move to the right because of the big, with the big help of the big head rotators, um, sternocleidomastoid and splenius capitis. So see two moves, three moves, each of these moves about seven or eight degrees, four moves on five, five moves on six, six moves on six moves on seven, and seven moves on T1. So see there he has got um, now he's looking 90 degrees to the right. He can look flatly against at the wall to the right. So his full range of motion will be to the right, a full 90, and then to straight ahead and none to the left. Okay. And the cure for this is not well, I, I suppose some cures would be to, to somehow get this muscle to relent. And um, there are techniques that use force to do that. The technique that I suggest is to turn the head even more until these are floppy, see? So it's um, in a position of relative, like, yeah, this muscle's guarded, but it doesn't have to do anything because this guy's doing it for me. So then in this position, the brain's thinking, oh, well, why do I have to guard that if he's doing it for me? And then this is the shortened position for this muscle. And then you do a little bit of massage work here, pressing and waiting. And then soon enough, the muscle's gone. No, no more reason to guard, and so it relaxes. And then you feel, because of the other normal tensions on this one, you feel that the head is ready and willing and wanting to come back to neutral on its own. Um, let's do the same thing on the left with a different camera angle. Let's zoom back a little bit here. Is that big enough for you? Okay, same lesson, just to the left now. Okay, this person um, looking to the left. And then suddenly a bee flies in his ear and goes, ow! And then he's deathly afraid of bees, of course, because he's uh, got an allergy to bees, or he thinks he does, because his mother told him he did. He doesn't really. But because of that fear, now he's guarding this muscle. Uh, he's really afraid. And uh, 
he thinks that the bee stung him. It didn't, but he thinks he did. And uh, he thinks he's going to die. He's not. But all that fear adds up, and he feels this um, pain happening right here in his neck. And he can't turn his head, and he's thinking it's the bee sting. So this guy's going to be guarded here. If I can get his knot tied. You ever tried to tie a knot while you're looking in a video camera? It's very challenging. Okay. So this guy is now permanently turned 45 degrees to the left because of that spasming left obliquus capitis inferior, OCI. Um, but is it permanent? Can he turn any other direction? Can he turn farther to the left? Can he turn farther to the right? Well, let's try. No amount of pulling with this right obliquus is going to get that left one to relent. Um, just by nature of um, static friction versus uh, moving friction, um, even if both of these have the same amount of horsepower, um, the one that's pulled first is going to win. So this one will not be able to move it back the other direction. Um, so the one that's already pulled always wins the battle against the one that's trying to pull, if they're equally matched. Um, what else about that? What if they're not equally matched? Now we we sh we I took the head off so you can't see the um, the big rotators, but way out here, here and here we have the over here we have the right splenius capitis, which comes backwards and attaches onto C7, like from here here to here. See if I can hold a rope here that'll show you like about what that would be like about here to here that would get a, a nice wide angle on the head and pull backwards on there and then on the front of the head um, you wouldn't be able to see that but right about here and then going forward from there down to the chest the chest would be right here the sternal notch and if we could get the head pulling this ear forward we could get a nice big um, motion from here to here a lot of horsepower like more than 10 times the horsepower of these puny little muscles. So we got a, a big one pulling from here and a big one pulling from here and those together are going to overpower and we will get the head rotating back to to looking straight ahead. But at what cost? Look, look at how C2 has to move to the left to get the, the head to move back to facing forward. C2 moves and then C3 moves after about 8 degrees, after about 7 or 8 more degrees, then C4 moves, after about 7 or 8 more, then C5, C6, and C7. They all move, and the person can rotate back to, 40, to facing straight ahead. The person will not be able to move more than straight ahead to the right, because all of the joints of the neck have been taken up. The ribs are next, and the ribs are not mobile. He'll have to move his old torso to move any further to the right. And you see people like that walking around. You say, hey, Fred, what's going on? And they have to turn their whole body to turn to one direction. But they say, oh, I can turn to the left just fine, see? So this person will have full range of motion, which is 90 degrees, looking to the left and to the right. zero. Facing straight ahead is the most he can look to the right. He won't be able to look to the left at all. Um, and as I said before, the best treatment position for this is to just, you know, hey, what's your most easy position? Well, my head flops over to the left. Okay. Okay. So he's in the easy position. Let's take you even further in your easy position and look at that. And the tension comes off of these strings when you turn them just a little bit further. And then um, this muscle is a lot more likely to want to relax during this time when the stress is off. So it's asking the muscles to relax rather than forcing them to, and then, and then the head will come back.